we continue my conversation with Australia's former Prime Minister Julia Gillard, her first TV news interview since losing power. As Prime Minister, climate change was always near the top of her agenda. And many, including Australia's new Prime Minister Tony Abbott, says that Gillard's carbon tax is the reason her party lost. Abbott and Gillard had a contentious relationship, as we've seen. So I started our conversation about her policies by asking you to respond to some of the Prime Minister's recent comments about her tenure. In a recent interview with an American journalist, he criticized your government and he said, I thought it was the most incompetent and untrustworthy government in modern Australian history. How do you respond to that? Uh, well, it's not full of compliments, is it? <laughs> uh, but I would have thought for people in the United States who are reading their first interview from the new Prime Minister of Australia, they'd probably be interested in other things than what he thinks of the opposition. What are your regrets as a leader? What do you wish you'd done better? I wish I'd done a few things better. I mean, I've got uh, more uh, sense of success about it than regrets. The climate one is a big one, though, right? I mean, many people say that this election actually turned on the whole idea of a carbon tax. Um, do, do you regret the term carbon tax? Do you, do you regret, what do you regret about how that sort of came back to haunt you? I regret uh, using uh, or allowing to be used the term carbon tax, uh, but I, rather than play the semantic game of is a emissions trading scheme with a fixed price a carbon tax or isn't it a carbon tax, I wanted to get onto the substance of the policy. Uh, but it did all end up being a semantic game and that, I think, cost me politically. Your successor, Tony Abbott, has in various speeches called climate change absolute nonsense. What is going to happen in Australia? Because it is the most polluting country per head in the developed world. Uh, the new Prime Minister, uh, Mr Abbott, is committed to repealing uh, our carbon pricing mechanism. Now that is a political battle to still be fought out in our nation's parliament. Uh, the government does not have the numbers in the uh, Senate, it does in the House of Representatives. Uh, so that political bal you know, uh, battle will rage on. Uh, for me, for Australia, I think that for our economy, which is so emissions intensive, that we have the most rational mechanism for change and the most rational mechanism is putting a price on carbon. Let me ask you about some of the issues that, the whole, the whole NSA issue, Edward Snowden, the leaks, has been a massive uh, story, as you know. Australia is part of the Five Eyes group, the English language allies of the United States, where you have special accords. How do you strike a balance? How does any leader strike a balance with the need to share intelligence? And again, last month, your media, the Australian media, reported that your embassies in Asia, Australian embassies, were part of the US-led electronic eavesdropping scheme. I think these are very difficult issues for governments to get the right balance. Um, and it's, you know, from the point of view of a population, also a difficult issue to get the right balance. On the one hand, Australians would rightly say to their government, uh, if there was a terrorist attack or something like that in Australia, why didn't you know? Why didn't you collect the intelligence? Why didn't you stop it? Uh, if we had something happen like happened in America at the Boston Marathon, people would be saying, well, why didn't you know? Then on the other hand, people say, but, you know, I want my privacy and I don't want the sense that phones are being tapped. Well, you know, ultimately these two things don't add up. In order to collect intelligence, then there will be electronic surveillance. Uh, the judgments, the difficult judgments about where the outer limits of that are, are for democratic governments to make. Uh, do governments get it right all of the time? Well, obviously not. Governments are made of human beings and so errors will be made. Uh, but you need a system with sufficient checks and balances and oversight. Do you think there are sufficient checks and balances and oversight in Australia? I, I think we've uh, overall got a good system of checks and balances, uh, but given uh, these revelations about President Udiono, then obviously you would be looking again uh, to make sure that the system is as robust as you would want it to be for the future. Let's talk about Asia, the importance of Asia, and President Obama's much-touted pivot to Asia. I interviewed the Prime Minister of Malaysia, and he told me that he thought it was a real missed opportunity that the President Obama did not come to Asia recently during the government shutdown. 
Do you feel the same? I do too think it was a missed opportunity. I absolutely understand why President Obama had to stay here in Washington uh, with the government shut down, with the looming debt crisis. Uh, I think what is to be regretted is that he ever had to face that choice, uh, that uh, politics in Washington hasn't found a way of managing these issues so that there aren't these moments of spectacular crisis whilst the world holds its breath and then President Obama can't go and do very important things like attend APEC and the East Asia Summit. Uh, our region, the region in which I live, is undergoing strategic and economic change. It will be the growth region of this century. They've heard that America is pivoting towards the region. Now they want to see that followed by the capability of engagement. And that does mean having your president there when key meetings are on. What would you say is the biggest foreign policy that you enacted I think the uh, single biggest change uh, is getting an agreed regular leaders level meeting with China. We are one of the few countries in the world that has a relationship at that level, which has that structured in the calendar every year. And we did that at the same time that we took a step forward in our alliance with the United States. Uh, there's plenty of fashionable foreign policy dogma that for us, uh, there's a zero sum game between the US and China. Someone's got to win and someone's got to lose. Uh, I proved as Prime Minister that you can win on both fronts and make this work. Certain issues in Australia have been dealt with. For instance, some of these, some of these really hot button issues like gun control. In Australia in 1996, obviously you well know this, you had a terrible massacre in Port Arthur and then there were policies enacted that restricted the use and the ability to possess guns. And it worked. How long can a democratic society like the United States keep sort of holding back from sensible gun control laws? I would wish that we could see uh, better laws in the United States. Uh, I think for Australia, uh, that Port Arthur mass massacre did uh, bring change. I would pay tribute to Prime Minister John Howard's leadership at the time. Uh, he's not a member of my political party, but he showed extraordinary leadership at that point. So I what could the United States learn from that? Well, I think uh, it does take leadership, but there's a big difference between our two systems. Uh, we have compulsory voting in Australia, so it's not compulsory to actually uh, mark your ballot paper in a valid way, but it is compulsory to go to a polling station on polling day and get your ballot paper. You can write a rude word on it if you like and put it in the ballot box, uh, but most people uh, use the opportunity to actually record their vote. Uh, that means inevitably our politics is about the mainstream and the mainstream wants practical, sensible things like gun controls that work and keep people safe. Are you scratching your head at how this democratic country can't seem to get universal health care on the books? Uh, well, I think President Obama's policy of trying to improve health care for Americans, particularly those who are uninsured, is the right policy, uh, but the politics has been tremendously difficult. Uh, in, in Australia, uh, a long, long time ago, Labor, uh, my political party, brought universal health care to Australia. It was originally hotly contested politically. Now, all these years later, it is accepted so deeply that it is now bipartisan politics. No one stands at federal election time in Australia and says, let's get rid of our universal health care system, Medicare, because everybody knows a politician who did that would be just laughed out of the country no one would vote for them. Are you really never going to go back into politics? You said you've quit forever. Really? Really? I've quit forever. Julia Gillard, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you.